Welcome to Burning Metal Shooting the Breeze, episode 20. In this episode, I'm joined by Joe Nally of Earn. How are things, man? Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Uh, just got in. I've got a bit of a got an hour-like sort of window, have a bit of lunch. I've got to head back out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know myself. The, I'm, the, a care the myself. Nice I'm a care yeah. of myself, so I need, I only yeah. had a short window myself. But have you any Irish roots? Like, Joe Nally is definitely could be considered an Irish name. Um, it's actually, well, it's Joe Murphy. So yeah, like so my um <clears throat> it's my like my my mum her side, my dad, he's the Nally, but we don't really know that, that we don't really know how far it kind of goes back. It stops kind of like my my uh nan or great nan. Mm. But my mum's side's Irish. Um it's quite a so it's the first time I've actually played Ireland. I was meant to a couple of shows back in the day, meant to go over a few times and uh a couple of injuries to people in the band, so we had to pull out but it's a yeah it's the first, first time in um it's a, it's a big one for me like because like my my great aunt she was like a big thing in my life this like old irish lady um who sadly just passed away but she at 108 years of age um, which is pretty impressive but she used to like sing and that and not not long before she kind of passed we I was I've got like some videos on my phone where she just remembered like old like Joseph Locke songs or flipping what the traditional songs which I probably know is like the Furies or the Dubliners doing them she had known before that and mm -hmm. yeah you know whoever's done it so um and yeah we got this show and I was like oh I've got to call her and I forgot and sadly I never I never had that chance and uh so it's a it's a it's one for me it's a bit of an important one so yeah she um she uh whenever I was in like Dublin I'd give her a call and she she would still know where everything was like if you go down here you gotta go here and I'm like how do you know at 108 years of age um so yeah so it's a, it's a big one for me <clears throat> and if you're going to play Ireland the siege is probably the best event you can play anywhere because it's guaranteed to sell out well, it's sold yeah. out as we know now and you're on at quarter 20 past eight in the evening like so you've you can't ask for better than that man you really yeah, can't yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that that's the thing. We were supposed to be playing Ireland with Orange Goblin in December, but then it's been postponed, and it just doesn't fit up. The new dates don't quite tie in with what we kind of have to like have to do. And honestly, like it seems to be for now at our sort of sort of level, <clears throat> unless we're kind of going over for like a festival, it's it's no matter what, just to get over to the UK and to to go over from the UK, like to to Southern Ireland and Northern Ireland prices are slightly different, um, but it's just, it just costs so much money. It's it's ridiculous. So, um, you know, to come over for something special, you yeah. know, that, that makes it like definitely worth it, you know? Because if you came over and done a, a small promotions tour, it wouldn't be worth anyone's while, would it? It really no. wouldn't like. <clears throat> I mean, the tour we were on to do the, the Irish States, um, we were definitely going to lose money, hundred percent, and it was a shame because we 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 kind of lucky at the moment. We're doing really well with merch and shit, so I'd hate to lose a load of money on getting ferries uh, to and from uh, Ireland, and uh, you know. So we like this one. I think I touched on it earlier with you. Like we're flying in, just cut out a load of driving and sitting on a boat for like eight hours. Couldn't couldn't hack it, mate. <laughs> I'd be crying for eight hours. And then oh, if the weather yeah. goes bad, you could be stuck out there for another fucking five or six, you know, yeah. and it couldn't dock, yeah. and, and then you've got all the expense and everything. Oh, it's... Yeah. Like I, I brought bands over to Ireland before years ago, and man, it, it cost crazy money. Like, you're looking at two grand just to get them over, like, you know, between them, just the basics. Yeah, it is it is insane. Like, um, like, so we were, like, looking, and obviously the more people in your party and all that sort of stuff, it gets... It started to kind of just, like, I don't know what we're going to do here, guys. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of, uh, it, it doesn't, I mean, when pit bands go, if, they, if, they, if they're fortunate enough to go to Ireland and play, like, one show, I'm like, what fee are you getting? I'd go over there, like, you know, if we did our own thing, I would make sure I'd hit, like, as many places as we could, just because mm -hmm. you may as well. Yeah. Once you're there, do, is what, do it, whatever you can, like, just because of the price, man. Uh, but as I already said, with the siege and that time of the day as well too, and it's a really well-oiled machine, so it's going you're going to be introduced to an awful lot of people, no matter what. And I'm hoping, 
putting this video out as well. I'll put it in all the Irish groups, etc. Just to mm-hmm. kind of encourage people, if you are at the siege, get out of the fucking smoking area or whatever you're at and yeah, go yeah, in and yeah. watch this band because yeah. earn our fucking class. And if you miss this band, you're a moron, basically. Yeah. You know? Well, not quite that rough about it, but, you know, you really, yeah. really need to check this band out if you're at the siege because <laughs> you're the, at the moment, you're kind of the best band nobody's really heard of. But a lot of people have heard of you, but you're 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 at kind of at that point now where the ascendancy is starting to rise so you want to be you say i got you at the start you know or near enough yeah it's quite nice like actually we've got a couple of people coming down from the north and uh and spent like today a guy was just like oh do you know what i've just looked this whatever from where i am how many hour drive and he was just like oh wicked do you know what fuck it i'm gonna do it and he was like oh, i can't sold out and i was like give me 10 minutes and i'll figure something out like I want people, you know. Like I think we get it in a lot of reviews. We're a pretty easy bunch of like guys to get along with, and we kind of give that off on stage. We might play an eight-minute fucking metal song, but in between, there's no like serious shit. Like I, I can't do that. Fucking like proper. This is fucking this and that. I don't have the voice for it. I have like a really twangy, annoying fucking London voice. So it just doesn't work. So we just have a laugh, and I think people just <clears throat> people can just relate to it because it is just definitely three like normal guys who people are just taking to and um i say this guy wanted to come see us i was like fuck it let me sort something out and uh yeah first time over i don't want people missing it and we've had uh there's a couple of festivals we're playing around europe and if if someone orders something i'm like in big festivals we get like what have a 10 guest list or some shit i don't know Hmm. and i'm like give me like let me know if we're playing near you and we'll sort something out so you know, I've done it for a few people for some of the festivals that we have. <clears throat> so, yeah, we just try and get everyone included because, mm. you know, it's like when people, you know, that whole fan thing, to me, it's not. It's just like I prefer if everyone's just becoming mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, don't, I don't want people to be my fans. That's, you know, that's, that's, not, that's not for me. I just want, you know, be nice just to every time I go back to a new city, I go back to the same city for the first, bleh, not for the first time, since our first time. So say next time I go to flipping wherever in Ireland there's people that I I've met before because we have played there or like when we, we played Manchester the other night and it was phenomenal it was our second time playing it and there were so many people that I'd either met before or it was like oh this is our second time or we might have seen you at Bloodstock so it's our third time seeing you so you know I, I want that you know yeah. I want people to just be able to come up and have a chat because honestly like that's one thing I think we pride ourselves on and just being dead dead easy lads to get along with yeah, Erno, I came across Erno for the first time at uh, Bloodstock last year, and I was really impressed, as I said, and I was like, holy sh! this is where I, because it, it, you, saw, you sound so different from everyone else, you just kind of have your own kind of thing going on, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you can't really compare you to anyone, like, you know, and uh, I, I mean, I get it. I was going to say, I, 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 I've since discovered that you yourself and Angus were initially in the band Hang the Bastards. So you, yeah. you had your apprenticeship in a band that was kind of yeah. around getting there too, you know. So you, you had a good background when you're going into her and you were like, well, we know what went right or what went wrong with our previous mm-hmm. band. Like, Well, before that, me and Angus, well, actually, it was nice to like see on the last tour we just did. Me and Angus were in like a, a band called Chapters who... We toured with Silosis, well, two full tours twice, maybe four tours altogether, kind of shorter tours. Mm-hmm. We did a lot of stuff and we released an album that the fans loved and we could get no press at all. So much to the point like bands like Kill Switch Engage used to wear like our merch on stage, this tiny little band for me. And I was just like, wow, we're going to make it. And mate, like, it's insane. Like, not one bit of like real press came our way. And it was just maybe, and it's weird, it's not far from what Earn does now. With anything, we got signed off of a song that we started writing in chapters. But from that, you know, I've been trying to try and away at that. And it was just, it, after knockback, after knock, knockback, it gets, it gets hard, man. And like our first fucking tour, like driving home 20 minutes from home, our bloody bus flipping like blew up the engine and we had to pay out and lost every, like, every bit of money and all this shit. And it's just from the get go, it's been pretty hard. So, I joined Hang the Bastard, like I toured with them while I was in chapters, like we shared a bus. Yeah. And um, yeah, we got along really well. And um, they just asked, and it was originally to be their sing, like their new singer. And um, they wanted to, then I think the management got involved. They wanted to go for something different. 
Um, so I was like, well, you know, they knew I played bass and I basically ended up doing like 30, 40% of the vocals anyway. And, you know, it kind of became clear as time went on, you know, that's what I did in chapters, bass and vocals. And I think it became clear, like the more and more people coming up going, you know, you're, you know, that's what you should be doing. And uh, that's what I, you know, once Ern kind of started, we were thinking about what lineups, but then I just was like, fuck it, I'll do it. Like, uh, I've got the voice that I know what I want to hear, like from our band. And, um, but yeah, we did the Hang the Bastard thing. It was, I learned a lot, you know, um, it was a great, you know, it was a great band. Um, like the, there was kind of two different lineups of Hang the Bastard. There's the more hardcore kind of version with a tinge of like, fresh and then there's like the kind of more of a doom sort of yeah. sludgier vibe and that's what I was a part of um don't get me wrong I, I I think I preferred playing like the kind of the more the older stuff I think there was like probably better songs if I'm honest and um but yeah and then once that split um like I can't mean Angus maybe took like a year and a bit out really yeah. and then I um, was just trying to get the last remaining piece for Earn and it was obviously trying to sort out drums and uh, I'd been, me and Angus did a tour with like Rich's old band. And um, he was just, he was literally just like us. And I was like, fucking hell. I always wanted to be in a band with that guy. And I hadn't spoke to him for like, maybe five years. I just dropped him like a message going, oh, do you fancy playing drums in a metal band? And uh, it was, I was like, yeah, I've been waiting for them for his text. And it'd been years. He'd, <laughs> like, I like to think that he was sat by the phone, just waiting <laughs> for it to flash up. And then, yeah, that kind of like led into that. So, you know, it was a bit of, you know, I, I, I definitely was the person hanging the bar, so we tried to make the most contacts, the most links. And I was the person that people seemed to want to deal with the most, even though it wasn't originally my band. But the four years I was in there, I was trying to t learn as much, you know. It's always a learning process in music and I will never fully under fucking, like, understand it, never. But um, it's always just learning and learning. And um, that's what I definitely, when hanging the bar, so that's why. I used it for like as well as writing some good songs with a few good lads and what have you. It was all about finally kind of learning after years of plugging away. Five years, maybe I think it's more. Been doing bands for twenty years. Fucking shit is that? <laughs> twenty years, and it's only started to happen. Oh, fuck yeah, now. And um, yeah, and yeah, like I say, so that set up um, just to kind of get a little bit, a little leap up, mm -hmm. but. It went like Hanging the Bastard was a massive band, so it wasn't a massive leap up. So yeah. it was maybe like the smallest, smallest little step, and then then kind of real work really started. Mm. Yeah, you've done quite got a good bounce with the first uh, the Mountain of Gold EP as well with uh, Dust Atlas and uh, the Lady and the Devil. Like they they yeah. they done pretty well them songs. Yeah, I I I I look back on it now. I think I think the, the production. My vocals sound really shit, and I, I weren't comfortable with like singing. I'm still not comfortable with like, clean singing at all. My, my screaming, my shouting yeah. voice, even though I probably look like an idiot, uh, yeah, it's my strong point. The clean singing, it's mm. but Dust That This was like fine. But I thought Lady and Devil, maybe now, if we did it now and we had a better production, and I didn't sound like I was, I don't know, sort of sound like I got like a, a robot, like a, like a bloody Dalek. Um, but I thought that chorus was massive and I was like yeah this is going to be it it did a little bit nothing nothing major mm. um, but I look back on it now I find it kind of hard to listen to so I'm just like oh the album is so much better <laughs> so you won't be playing that at the weekend so no no I don't think we'd ever really play maybe maybe one of them um, do you know what the point and I, I was on a, a podcast like a live thing a Riot Act podcast and I said the EP, we purposely made it easy. Like, if you listen to it, I don't think there's any double bass. I was like, we'll hold that back. We'll hold back that there's any kick. We'll hold back this. we hold back that. Like, I wanted to make a, a really simple laid-back EP, laid-back in the metal term. Yeah. And then if people liked it, I was like, well, fucking guess they will be shocked at the jump up. And uh, and that's what I've kind of said. I kept, I, on this live thing, I was like, it's the third record which would be the next one that's going to be the big one but i didn't expect serpent to go down as well even as like i said we're not we're not walking around like bloody james hetfield in large but it kind of got us on a little bit got us respected um 
but yeah it it's fun it's a fun ep and some people really like it um and that's fine i obviously think they're mental but um you know i don't think we'll be playing any of that uh maybe somewhere down the line i yeah. wouldn't be surprised if we drop something in just to keep it keep it interesting for us anyway we might rework it at some point or yeah 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 definitely i <laughs> know uh, i think they're both fairly solid songs and it was a kind of a it's kind of a good step up you know get the kind of get the idea where you were it was, mm. wasn't really it could change completely but it kind of it kind of there was parts of where you were going in it there was heaviness there was melody there was yeah. It's a precursor to the album in a lot of regards, I thought, you know, it's, yeah. the album was a huge step up now, as we know yourself, it was just, yeah, yeah. How did I you think... get, get down, just got on Candlelight Records on the bit, on the strength of your name, or was it the, did you send them on the advance, or how did you get onto Candlelight? So, I am, I've known Darren, who works at Candlelight, Spine Farm, and whatnot forever, so Darren works with Emperor, Ramstein, you know, just a lot of a lot of people, and uh, I known him for ages, and he liked the band Chapters, and um, you know, it was what whatever it was, you know, it's just it, at the time I, don't, I think he offered us something, but I wasn't comfortable with the lineup we had in Chapters, and one day I just we finished in the studio, and I posted up a picture going, uh, just got the first like test mix back, had a great time, blah 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 can't wait to, for people to hear this and we had like you know we just thought we were going to either self-release it or just release it on a, like a little little label mm-hmm. and um Darren just messaged you can I hear one can I hear it and I went I'll send you a song and um I said it in desolate heart and I think it I don't even think he finished listening to the song and they've got a text going I'll, I'll, have, I'll give you a call tomorrow I, I think I need this Jeez. and um yeah and uh what i think as well it's um uh, you know i think with them as well it's like the first thing maybe they've had in a while that have maybe caused a, a ripple again we ain't walking around we ain't no massive band but this maybe got people going oh like well, okay that's 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 interesting let's see let's see what's going to happen and um yeah I, I just think it worked out well at the time um like and like here we are now really i mean i think we were got the contract sent to us within like a week went over it uh, uh with some people i work in a law firm so i went over it with one of my team mm. and um yeah like here we are and a lot of things have changed and you know that they're, they're backing us like big time i think they um i think uh i think it's going to be a good thing going forward Oh man, the right people are saying great things about the band. Like, you know, look at the album of the year awards, Matt from Trivium, Joe from yeah. Gajira, like, yeah. fucking, like that's insane that they like they even heard of you and like never yeah. mind that to put you in the top ten list because the band is so underground, like, you know, it's yeah, it's it really Jesse, is reaching crazy right people, like, you know. Jesse from Kill Switch. Yeah. Um we got uh Ben from Whitechapel, just got a got a copy of the album and like he messaged, he was just like, he sent us a really nice message. And Jean Michel from Gajira. And um, it's weird because, yeah, it's all very organic. It's not like I don't think in America, I don't know how strong our PR campaign is. Mm. Joe heard it because Jean Michel listens to literally every new metal record that gets released on a Friday. Mm. And um, he only, from when the album came out to last week, he'd never posted about another band. And he last week he posted Cobra the Impaler, I think that's the name. And um, yes, yeah, the first time since. And I was like, fuck it now. And uh, yeah, then they went on tour. I think Gajir went on tour in November, December. And uh, Jean Michel saved it that whole time and started playing it to Joe. And then Joe sent us a message. And uh, I was just like, <laughs> you'll be sitting at home and I'll, I'll get a notification on our Instagram. I'm like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, Silver Chord Studios follows you, and I was just like levitating. <laughs> I fucking, I did. I had to like keep going back. I was just like, and I called the lads. I'm like, what's that thing? I was like, you never guess what. And like sometimes, like I, I, I do it. Like I love it surprising them. But this fucking case, I was like, fuck it. That's the guy outside of your Slipknot, your fucking Metallica, Maiden, and uh, I don't know. He because you are so respected 
mm-hmm. just because that just normal dudes doing metal. There's other, you know, there's other great bands. You get you get your sub- sabatons where they dress up like army officers from a bad eighties fucking criminal fucking thriller or something, and all that. But as it comes to actual quality and no gimmicks, it's a proper band. That's the band, and they've reached out. He's fucking reached out to us. Mental. And I, I thought John Michelle had made a mistake, and that was the thing. And I said it in an interview, like with Metal Hammer. I was like, I, honestly, I was convinced. I was like, because the, the name in French, obviously, you get the funeral, um, but it's also like a ballot box. I think you know it's, it kind of covers a couple of different things. And I was like, oh. And then he started following us, and he sent us like fucking loads of like horns. And I was, I was like, fuck yeah, now. And then um, I was on the way home from work. And I was like reading the Revolver. They got album of the year in Revolver. I was reading the big end of year um, interview with Joe. And, then and he, he was like, yeah, so I like Mastodon, our label mates. And um, man- Dale's got the same manager. He went, I like the Greta Van Fleet one. And he was just like, and then us. And I was, like, I, I was on the train, like fucking shaking. And I was like, that's insane. Like that is insane, and um, I was just like, "That's there forever now." Mm-hmm. And then Jesse Leach did a thing with Knotfest, his top albums, and he said us. And Jesse Leach is literally from Killswitch Engage is the reason I I scream, shout, whatever. Mm-hmm. He is the reason. And if you told me twenty years ago, like when he left Killswitch Engage, he was my fucking hero. Like in two thousand and two, some fucking showing my age, he oh, was my hero. You know, he was the man. I remember getting Metal Hammer and they had an article, it's probably like an inch long to see him going, Jesse Leach has left Killswitch Engage. And I was like, oh, he does, I was like, he deserves more than that. Because I just been, uh, I thought he was the fucking man. If you had told me 20 years later, my favorite fucking singer, my like, the, like him and James Hetfield, I don't even play guitar, I play bass, him and James Hetfield and, and Jason Newstead, that was like my period of Metallica, my heroes. Would one of them would go one of the albums of the year? I would have gone fucking mental. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it blew my mind. And the Matt from Trivium thing's great, but Matt from Trivium, he supports like everyone, yeah. um, which is like it gives so many bands like, oh, fucking, yeah, there we go. That's really great. It's great content as well. But then, like I said the other day, Whitechapel, a band I don't know much about, but I've got a lot of friends who like them and I know they're big. The guitarist was just, yeah, oh, mate. I've really got your album and blah blah blah. And so I was like, I'll ping you over a copy, mate. Don't worry about it. Cheers. And he was like, Yeah, be great. Be great if we did a tour of each other. And I was just like, Yeah, like you guys are big. Ask us. Yeah. <laughs> We're not, you know, you, just just let us know. So it has been great. And the big one for us was the Metal Hammer yeah. uh, end of year list by the critics. And again, for a band who. You know, we had a little media push, but we're not a hype band. We're not a fucking hipster metal band. Like, we're a proper band. You know, there's a, it's a definitely a difference. And over here, you can fucking tell there's a difference because it shocks people, you know, when you put a real a band who knows what they're doing, uh, who's dedicated, like, my whole fucking life listening to this genre of music and in, in immersing myself with everything. And then when it comes out, it comes out naturally. It's not going, oh, we want to part like Davidian. and I want to part like this and that. No, you just let it come out of you. And if you've listened to it enough, it just t- overtakes you. It's just like second nature. You feel like you're, that is you that's coming out. And um, when that came in and I was like, oh, I might be in the top 50. And all these other bands like who are bigger than us in this sort of UK thing, like they were all above us. And I, I was like, oh, fucking hell, yeah, maybe we didn't get in it. And it was in like the top 20, like above like all these fucking big bands. And I was buzzing because I know Dom Lawson, who for me is the best metal critic yeah. ever. The fact that he had it in his top three or whatever it was. And he's such a big fan of ours. If you've grown up loving your metal, reading your metal, reading all the magazines when they were fucking great, Dom Lawson has always been the fucking best. And the fact that he liked it, meant as much to me as Joe fucking liking it, the guy in that band, it meant as much to me. I, I can't I can't explain the fact that he's such a big promoter of, of us and how much he loves us and gave us the most stunning like, review of the album. That 
is if you like if you were told me when I was reading whatever terrorized the metal hammer like when I was a kid yeah. that that guy who you think's the best writing about metal thinks your band's fucking special brilliant uh, again I wouldn't have believed it you know so yeah but it was been it, it's been received really well but I still think you know if um I still think things could have been better um but you know if if I, if I ever said no it was perfect and whatnot well then I don't need to do anything else if I thought it was received perfectly and I felt it was pushed perfectly and I felt we did our part perfectly I wouldn't have to do anything else but there's always room for improvement so uh yeah and on to the next one so we've got to make this next one better yeah, well, you've got a great slot coming up at Manorfest as well in June, like, or May, sorry, should I say, just under uh, Accept and Overkill, like. Yeah, uh, cracking up. I don't, Wayne, the guy does it, Wayne Jackson, lovely dude, absolute mentalist. But he's, what I, re, what I really appreciate is he's seen that there is something mm. and he's gone, you, not to us, you won't be opening, you're going to be on that main stage, but you won't be the opening band. And we're going to make sure that he, what an insane lineup! Now it's now Moonspell, Overkill, except us and Witch Hazel, I think. And I'm like, wow! Like the fact that he's gone. Yeah, you are. I think this is amazing. And he's put his like put his money where his mouth is, sort of thing. And he's backed us. That's amazing. And as for Overkill, <coughs> when we did the um, album, we had to do some autographed versions. And we come over to my house. I had Overkill live from Overhausen in Germany blu-ray on we signed all our vinyls whilst watching that whole set and then we're playing with fucking overkill fucking like, oh, i can't believe it we have to be walking around like bobby blitz can i have my vinyl signed and if he tells me to fuck off i will never recover from that <laughs> i will never get over that like ever uh, uh, it's a great lineup of master manifest all weekend though the start to finish it's a top draw lineup like you know and it seems to be doing well now i've seen the camper van tickets have sold out and buses are selling out so the omens the omen is good for it. like their people are getting behind it yeah i think like it's filling out maybe a spot where obviously bloodstock's got so big that mm. now it has to put on a few out of the out of the metal box bands yeah so now that's kind of come in now as like a metal festival i mean bloodstock i mean it's still the top you know like you know we played this year and it's phenomenal for us and simon who put booked us on there put us on a you know a stage that was for a band who never played a festival that day it was that day's main stage because the main stage wasn't open put us on a great slot fully back to the band you know like he's a massive supporter of us and he got to hear like some of the stuff before anyone and he was just, like phenomenal like and um, but I think now for maybe a bit more of the heavier sort of stuff, manifest come through, and it's always good to have competition, right? Mm. Um, and I just think it's a really fun like lineup. The location looks great, and I've just messaged Wayne before I spoke to you. I was like, I have some questions to ask because I want to stay as just one of the other lads, and I'm like, where can, where do we stay, Wayne? Am I staying in this manor house? Oh, like this beautiful fucking manor house that you've got. Or what do I, what's the deal? And um, I've got a couple of my friends who are like, oh, so, like, can we come along? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm with big time on about wherever I can, I would like to try and bring my friends along, like not industry people. Mm -hmm. I've made that mistake before and it fucking never done anything for me. Just get your mates along. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want my mates to enjoy what, it's not just me experiencing it. I want my friends to experience it, you know? And that's something that we're really big on because, like mate i want to come off stage and be like fucking hell like, my pals and i want them to feel the same excitement so it's a big thing for us that we always try to sort out our friends because mm. if industry people are good enough they won't need me to sort them out do you know what i mean so but yeah ma manifest amazing um we've got some shows with gate creeper um we've got cup and hell which looks like the most ridiculous lineup i think i've i've seen uh into the grave in holland just got some brutal assault festival which got some, oh there's this one in poland and we were on that main stage with carcass heathen tom g warrior playing a set of um triptychon hellhammer and celtic frost stuff and and 
And I'm like, and we're on that main. I was looking at all the other bands. I was like, oh, decapitated to be there. Now they've put us. And I was just like, fucking mad. What are you doing? <laughs> like, uh, I, I, let, I don't know if we're going to go to Poland and we're going to be the big, biggest band. I don't know what's happened. We, we'll see. It's, it's, it's exciting, you know? So, it's but we've got some amazing ones. And we, yeah, we've got some good, exciting stuff along the way, yeah. And you kind of, I know it was a bad time, the whole pandemic thing, even though it's still not over and et cetera, but you got Bloodstock and you got Damnation and true to all the bands. Did you, were you initially on them or did you get on because of all the bands dropping out? I can't, I can't recall exactly. We were initially on Bloodstock. You were initially on Bloodstock, right? Yeah. And we got on Damnation due to people uh, dropping oh, off. And dropping out all the US bands and everything. Yeah. I'd like to have another go at Damnation. I think we got put in the wrong room. I mean, we had so many people who were like, they stopped letting us down the stairs. And when I turned up and we were playing what was essentially a canteen, I was gutted. Because the last time I played, I played the main stage like midway through the day of Hang Your Bastard. And I was like, I thought there was another stage there, which I, I fucking I thought we were on. Yeah, I know. And they were like, no, it's not. Yeah, I was like, I thought it was like a theatre thing. And I was like, I really thought that was us. And I went down and it was like, it was like a converted sort of part and the state, the sound on stage was so bad. It was so bad. And I couldn't wait to get off. And uh, people were like, oh, no, it, it was fine. But at the end of the day, they stopped letting people in. We had so many people couldn't come. And I knew they fucked up because I knew what happened at Bloodstock. Mm. And we've had that a few times now where we kind of have to kind of stand our ground. Maybe, yeah, we might not be this band who are, oh, you have to listen to this band or whatnot. But I think real people are starting to realise Mm-hmm. This is a good. This is a good band, and I don't want to sound like an egotistical like tosser, but you know I can't turn around and say we're shit. I know we're we're we're, we're a really good band. I think we deserve a little bit more of a chance and a little bit more of respect. Mm-hmm. So um, with Damnation, I just think it was where we were replacing a band, and it was just one of them things. Mm-hmm. I would definitely like another crack at that, uh, just because honestly, and and when I looked on the stage, and I was just like. They didn't turn the lot. I'm trying to set up stuff. The lights are off. They're blaring music through the PA. And I'm like, oh, man, I knew it was going to be. I knew it was going to be a bad one. And I just, I really felt we didn't maybe give our best. Uh, I, I didn't give my best performance. I was just like, compared to that, Bloodstock was phenomenal. Everything was done. I don't no, think there's anything wrong with Damnation, but it was just such an awkward stage because it had like, the big ramps all around it. And, I mean, if you didn't get in early and you're on the main floor, you were behind a pillar or there was somebody constantly walking on you. So I probably, I missed a yeah. lot of your set because I was moving out of people's way and ducking and diving. You know, I was just, it wasn't, it was yeah. definitely the weakest stage at that festival. Anyway, I didn't go back after that, I can tell you. Yeah. Could, I wouldn't have been able to find it, mate. <laughs> like, it was like mental. <laughs> I think, I think it was that far away. I, I actually ended up in Manchester. <laughs> 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 So, um, but yeah, no, I'd like another crack at Damnation, definitely. Yeah, Gavis sound anyway, so no doubt the opportunity will arise again. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. And you've got a, you've got something new coming out soon. You were telling me in the, before we started, yeah. Yeah, we've got a new music video coming out soon. Um, for just just for one of the tracks and from the album, but it's a shortened version. I say shortened. It's not like we've cut them with the main meat of the song. We're just taking the intro out. It's for the final track. Beautiful video shot in a church, all in one go. Kind of like a bit of a tip of the hat to like uh, with the film Whiplash, where the camera's moving around really quickly between performances. All shot in one go, so we had to do it 10, 12 times. And it was pretty hard to hear stuff, to be honest. And um, I mean, it's not like, it's not a live performance, it's us performing to a track mm-hmm. because I've got, you know, I've got no mic stand. And, you know, you're definitely going to get a person online go, oh, his voice travels or some shit. Um, and it was a bit hard. It was harder than I think we thought it was going to be. But um, it looks beautiful. It's done by a friend called Gavin Fain, who done the album artwork. Um, he took, well, he took the picture of the album artwork, and he does all our promo stuff. He's done the Palace Levels on Wolves video. He's like our go-to guy, and he's he's phenomenal. And uh, you know, he kind of taps into what I like. I like kind of real. I don't like fucking like painted artwork now everyone's got the same sort of style of painted artwork and i'm like at one point you're going to go well mine looks exactly like that this looks like that whereas gav took this beautiful picture of like the sunset the sun rising and i was like wicked that's what i want i just want something different and we took 
edited some bits out of it to make it look like if you turn it upside down, it's almost a different world kind of beyond. Like that's a kind of a tip to what the album's kind of like in some some aspects. And um, yeah, and so I say he's just done this new video and um, it looks cool. It, it looks cool. It's, um, with all the big festivals coming up, certainly got the seven of them, I think, in, in abroad. Um, and I count Ireland definitely as abroad. I know. <laughs> Yeah, I know I said to you earlier, like some people are like, oh, it's still no, 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 no. If you have to fly to get there, it's not your country. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not a part of it, you know what I mean? If you have to pay to get get across the border or whatnot, it's not, it's not your country. Um and uh, yeah, so it's actually it's our last last thing I touched on. It's the first time as we've we've been abroad and we're flying. So, you know, we've got our sunglasses ready to look 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 rough, proper rock and roll. <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, well, I think you'll need them in Ireland, man. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> true, yeah, yeah. I don't think, I kind of think the last time I went to Ireland and it was sunny. Oh, it was sunny in the morning. And as soon as I put the phone down to me, aunt, it started to rain. I don't think I've ever been um, to, our, to any part of Ireland and it not been shit weather. Apart, I went, I was in Belfast in, in December. It was, it was lovely because it was just chilled, but there was no rain. I've been there for all different stuff. So yeah, fingers crossed this time. I have a nice, I can try and top up my pink skin, you know. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's um with all these festivals coming up, they've been, you know, so many people still haven't heard us. So I know some of the big festivals going, like if you've got anything coming out or whatnot you want us to push, contact our social media team and we will push that. So that's what we're gonna try and do with some of these. Um Summer Breeze is one of the first things they did, like you we're here as a vessel like we will push whatever you you guys want us to push and you know that'll get us out to you know hopefully more people and it's it make you know with all these festivals coming up it kind of gets us a little bit 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 on the map again you know mm, yeah. i know the album's only still really new i guess it's not even a year old but it's still you know it still kind of puts us just a, a little bit more content coming out so yeah that'll be out at the end of the month so if I need you gonna play you gonna play new tracks this weekend or is it all just your established songs or no we are doing a new one we did yeah. tested it out on the uh the last tour which did with devil's holy soul mm -hmm. and um yeah it's it's yeah it's good um we got it's gonna be pretty tricky because we can't bring all of our equipment so like there's a couple of bits guitar wise that might sound a little bit different instead of sounding clean they're gonna have a little bit of electric guitar behind it because we don't have all the pedals mm -hmm. but um I mean the guys have who are like they're providing the kit is pretty pretty spot on for what we need. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah we're gonna be playing a new song. Um yeah it's it's definitely different from the rest of the set but it still fits in with the kind of intensity of like everything and like the kind of our version of what well, I guess we deem as epic. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah it's yeah we're, we're definitely gonna be playing something new. Oh, that's good that's good something new it's look for for people who know the band to check out as well and mm -hmm. As I said, man, you've got a great slot at 20 past eight. And from what I can see on the Clash Finder, there's there's one band that you're clashing with, but I don't know if they're really, they're so different that you wouldn't, if they were, wouldn't really affect the crowd. Like, you know, I th yeah. think you're going to pretty much get a full house in there all going well, like. Uh, fingers crossed, mate. And then, you know, hopefully, I mean, we're going to be watching Blind River for um, us. Uh, you know, we know some of the guys. And uh, afterwards is Condra, who... I sung on that first EP. Oh, and, uh, nice. I'm friends with some of the guys in that band. Um, the drummer, the, well, one of them, they got like a, a live drummer now who's was in one of my old bands. So, you know, we know them guys pretty well. So nice. I thought they were headlining though, but it's weird, isn't it? It's very, it's done that European thing where mm -hmm. in Europe they have like Iron Maiden and then they'll have like David Hasselhoff <laughs> after them. But like, or, or like smaller bands, because Condra are like, what are the headliners? Mm -hmm. But there's come some other bands after them. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I definitely know that is a thing a lot of them, a lot of things doing in Europe, which is, is cool. Well, they've got to, uh, the band after Condra, they're pretty well known in Ireland. You've got a band in Carnate, who are like one of the bands that put metal on the map in Ireland for the round for 25 oh, okay. years. And they haven't played oh. a show since 2018. So oh, they're on. And then uh, oh. Baylor are actually the last band on. They played. Uh, Bloodstock last summer yeah. as well. They're doing a hold of their um, latest album, right? They are, yeah. So the, the, oh, the, right. the two that okay. got on last there, they're not really, 
we'll probably try to give them a better push, you know, because the headline bands get them on early, and then if people want to leave, anyone wants to stay, you're kind of getting. Oh right, Cause I didn't know it's Baylor. I didn't know they were the, the last band. Yeah, Baylor um, are last on. Yeah. Oh okay, right okay, but because it's weird because the promote the poster looks like Conjure are headlining. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Oh, that's sweet. Well, fair fucks. I think one of them on at one o'clock in the morning. And sorry to say, lads, like I'm definitely going to be asleep because our flight leaves at seven a.m. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, oh, it's a, oh. looking, by the time you're finished in the Conjure set, you'll probably have to start heading off anyway and get going yeah. again because you've got to go back and whatnot. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty fucking brutal to be fair. Um, but I mean, we've got bank holidays, so you know, and it's we were kind of thinking, do we go the night before? And it's just like, no, fuck it, we we go we go Sunday Sunday morning, mm-hmm. get we're flying out about nine o'clock, get to Shannon, I think about nine 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 ten or um, eight ten past ten, sorry. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so it'd be pretty easy, like mm-hmm. you know. So I am looking forward to it because it's it's nice to do. And have no reservations about a man that's a really, really well oiled machine. Like Kieran is an expert on sound, like and he's been yeah. at it for years, like and John does a great job as well. So yeah. you really are if you're coming over to Ireland, this is the perfect thing to play. You're going to have great sound, big crowd, receptive yeah. crowd, because the Limerick yeah. scene is very, very receptive. Like the people down there actually <laughs> give a give a shit. Like they're not like if you could go play in Dublin, you could end up playing on a stage and half of them could be out in the smoking area or out yeah, in the back yeah. or whatever. When you're playing them, oh. you're guaranteed to get them. If if I to get up on stage and it's fucking empty, I'm I'm after you. <laughs> I'm I'll, for you. I'll, they won't be empty. I'll be definitely there anyway, so I won't be hard found. <laughs> Just be you, you at the front. <laughs> but no, I think you're safe enough on that. Anyway, <laughs> man, we'll leave it at that. Now you've got to go back to work and all the rest of it and get on with your day. And cheers for doing yeah. this, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you again at the weekend. This will be number three now for me to see the band. So, Wicked. I think this is. I think this is going to be. I think we're in a good place at the moment, definitely. Mm. So, you, you, yeah, your, your sound suits in there will, will suit there as well. The, the venue itself, like it's just, yeah. I can just see you doing really well in there, like you know. Yeah, no, totally. And like I say, I mean, it's going to be, it's a, it's a good one. Uh, it's a good, good thing to get to. Like, if I'm going to play Ireland for the first time, at least I, I know I'm going to be playing something good with X amount of people there and people who want us there. So, it's going to be, it's a nice feeling to know. Yeah. And oh you keep the you have the story with your grandmother as well. If you're going to do Ireland, you're going you're doing it the right way. Yeah, yeah, totally, man. Like, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's nice to finally get to you know after going there um, x amount of years and whatnot. It's nice actually to finally play to play it. So um, so yeah, it's it's a big one. You know, it's a big one for me. Could be the right time, like Erin is the band going forward, and you know you're in it for the long haul. So maybe. Yeah. maybe it was meant to be to, not meant to be until now you know yeah yeah totally and that, that seems to be a lot of things at the moment there's a lot i say a lot of things kind of going on behind the scenes where it's it's happening at the really right time not just for us but for the other people mm-hmm. and yeah i think everything's everything's winding up to to get there i think there, i think um hopefully we got some things to announce which uh will surprise people so uh i'm excited great stuff great stuff sure anyways man cheers for coming on sweet mate thank you very much much.